to be quite a big company, uh, 30,000 employees making uh, uh, Chromebooks now and things like, you know, Chrome, Chrome OS and uh, perhaps Android as well. Microsoft managed to extort them as well. They don't create much of an incentive to fight back. And as you said before, the consumers are affected as well. I usually don't say consumers, but in this case, they are people actually putting in the money to buy the phone. And probably 15, uh, 10 pounds is not going to look like so much of a difference to them. But if they consider the fact that they buy something that has absolutely nothing to do with Microsoft, and they pay 10 pounds to a company that has nothing to do with the phone, and, and didn't even take things to court, but basically an extortion of sorts. Uh, that's that's quite serious. And, and readers have to remind me on the sites, because I, I usually speak about developers and kind of a personal point of view, and saying this is really bad for us, because it's not just Android, it's any developer who makes an operating system that does basic things will be sued and will be extorted. So there is no room for competition this way. Not, not only does it take a lot of effort to write an operating system, but then they will become an tax on you as soon as you're successful. Uh, so so that's, that's a pretty... Uh, major issue also for consumers, you know, the elevation in price, and be very careful of the line, they'll tell you something about, oh, research and development, yes, we need to have this money to promote and incentivize innovation, and pro it's, it's, all, it's all BS uh, for the same reason that the pharmaceutical cartels, when you look closely, what they use the money for is uh, a lot of marketing, and a lot of the money just goes to the top billionaires, so investors and billionaires, so uh, this is money going out from the consumers, from people in like the middle class to the super rich who have the patent system to ensure that they get paid uh, this extra kind of income tax of, for people to pay. In this case, it's the income, not actually the income, but actually the expenditure tax. And, you know, you buy a phone, you have to pay those rich people some money because they claim to invent the tab or progress bar and who knows what else they patents on. So it's 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 really quite frustrating. And a company called Red uh, Red Band, which sued Google, I think Google's Chrome, a few uh, actually more, about a year ago now. Uh, they have just announced in a press release that they got some more software patents, and to me it seems like they intend to do some more litigation then uh, over browsers and things. And it's 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 just. It, we, we really, if we want to resolve the issue, it's not just about Microsoft, because as, as I said before, Apple's doing the same thing increasingly, following the same root food path as Microsoft. And did, did you know, in CPTN, both Microsoft and Apple are participants, and the same applies for the consortium they created to, uh, to deal with Nortel's patents, and Apple and Microsoft are apparently the leading two in these, uh, in these consortia. So, they are the ones working together, and I always emphasize to people, Apple and Microsoft are not so much opponents. They actually have many things to agree on and work together on to uh, push away this open source, free software thing uh, to fight against commodity. Um, so the, the way to fight, of course, against this is to eliminate software patents, not just one company, but just get rid of software patents. IBM and Intel also promote software patents. and. We just have to remove the phenomenon, not the company or the players. And an another worrying, uh, possible worrying result of, of all this would be the. There's been many reports that are suggesting that Microsoft's actually making more money um, from its attacks against uh, on Android than it is from its own Windows Phone 7 platform. Yeah, well, it's, now, it's, it's, that that fact alone, for an average user maybe who doesn't have an interest in uh, patents and um, and the sort of background. Uh, politics of uh, what's going on behind the scenes. That certainly should be of interest to an average user and certainly something that they should bear in mind. Um, it's a very sad state of affairs if that's true. We don't have any figures. We've never had an official uh, comment as far as I'm aware that um, Microsoft does indeed make more money. But if the sales figures for Windows Phone 7 are as they were reported and the reports on Microsoft taking a, a slice of the action from Android phones are as accurate as reported, then by doing simple maths we can see that yes indeed Microsoft does appear to be making more money with the Android uh, platform than it does with its own uh, own creation. So that, that's a very sad state of affairs, a very sad testament of today's technology and a warning for the future. Are we likely to see much innovation in the future if every time somebody produces something that comes within the, the radar of Microsoft's uh, profit margins, then it's going to be uh, threatened out of existence. Um, so it, it's, it is a very worrying trend, and it could certainly harm innovation. And when people say that patents attack innovation, it's not something said just as a, as a key phrase or, or buzzwords. It actually is true, because if you put yourself in the position of a developer and you are concerned about being a, 
being attacked in the same way as Android has been, would you wish to uh, release your innovation in the market? And the answer is probably no. So um, that can't be a good thing. Um, can I, I stick work with some code today? Uh, I apologize if you, you tried to move to a different subject. I just want to have a few, a few, to make a few points uh, that occurred to me. The first thing is uh, you mentioned something about innovation, and I, I'm working with some research-related uh, code now, and it's shared for academic purposes, which is what I do with it. But also, it says things like uh, you couldn't make commercial things, you know, from it, and I suppose not even if you give the code back and whatever. But it actually says something like uh, the we have patents pending on this code, and it says it in the top of the code. So basically, like, don't try to replicate this code or to use any ideas expressed in the code because we have patents on it. And you know, how is this supposed to help a researcher where they give you a they give you a piece of code, they say, well, you couldn't do many things with it, you can play with it. And if you even think about doing something that does something similar conceptually, we have patents on it, so we have a monopoly on it. You know, it's 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 really weird because you look at the code, you kind of say, well, okay, it's copyrighted, fine, but they say, well, you couldn't even do something that behaves in a similar way because we have patents on it, and it actually says it in the code. That's the first time I saw anything like that in inside the actual code. Um, the other thing I was going to say though uh, is the lobbying. Or patents that that's really good for those who are uh, guarding the gates uh, of the of their monopolies. So Gates himself, Bill Gates, is uh, has been hiring lobbyists with uh, Nathan Mirvold, uh, and I, I wrote some articles about it. They actually do fund these things, and it's it's not even secret anymore. But nobody really writes articles about it. But you can see it's they even write about it in their website and make announcements about it. Uh, and they, one of the things they did, which was quite daring, was try and compare the attempts to reform patent law to something like the, 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 the bank's heist and, you know, things like, you know, robbery and, you know, stealing money from people, you know, and this is just for patent reform, you know, the things we're talking about now and being unconstitutional and so on and so forth. And, and th this is coming from people like Gates and Mirvold. They they just want to have a new tax, a new Windows tax, or a new Microsoft tax, or a new, you know, them their tax, whatever it is, to to make sure they get more money every time a person buys a phone. Uh, so that's that's obviously not good. And uh, well, it's nice to always remember as well that, um, like I say, if if it is true that Microsoft is making more money from a from a Linux uh, from Android, then um, we should refer back to Steve Ballmer's comments, which were alleged to be made, I think, was it around early 2000 or maybe a little bit before, where he likened uh, Linux to a cancer. So apparently now this cancer is making uh, Microsoft quite a bit of money, and maybe he would like to apologise for uh, for likening it to cancer and maybe uh, take back what he said all those years ago. Um, it seems a little ironic that uh, what he, he condemned at the time now they seem to be relying upon um, as a revenue stream. Um, if we can stay with Microsoft though for a minute, there's a there was a bit of news today that I briefly caught. I don't need to read the fine details of it because I think we can all guess by the, the title what it's going to be about. Um, Skype and Facebook integration. Um, I was reading a few articles and uh, a few bits and pieces on that. Very interesting, not unexpected, and uh, probably a shot across the bow for um, Google who are just. Uh, teetering on the edge of releasing their uh, Google Plus, which is uh, shrouded in mystery, certainly for me, because I still haven't got my beta invitation yet. Um, so, I don't know, Roy, if you have any comments on the on the Facebook? Yeah, well, that's just the Microsoft thing. The whole thing is just, just the gang of Microsoft now grouping together. So, uh, I think we've explained it before, and I think it's well established also in the uh, growth law community, that Facebook is clearly on uh, Microsoft's side as far as the, the camps. It's using Fox only for servers, and the reason for doing so is because it, that's the only thing that's viable to use on the internet. And even Microsoft uses some Linux and some servers, which ones. But, uh, you know, it's promoting Silverlight and it's giving Microsoft access to all the data. Did you know that? Yeah, well, Microsoft is share, shareholders, aren't they? They've got a, quite a bit of stock no, in. No, no, the, no uh, I'm, I'm referring specifically to when you're using Facebook and you give them data, like even private yeah. data, mm -hmm. they share it with certain advertisers and they also share it with Microsoft. Yeah. 
Uh, no, I, I was just sorry. I was just making it. I, I assumed that Microsoft did have a, a big stake in Facebook anyway, and that would be for me a given yeah. anyway. I mean, I personally don't use Facebook. They didn't actually spend much time on it. Uh, sorry, much money on it. Uh, way back in the day, so they just like took five percent. And uh, what hypothesis was it was supposed to deter 